please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by members of the Ripon College ROTC Red Hawks Company Color Guard. Offering our invocation today is Dr. Brian Smith, Professor of Religion at Ripon College. God, you are called by many names, and you answer to all of them, Yahweh, Jesus, Allah, Father, Mother, Brahman, Great Spirit. No matter the name, wisdom and compassion are signs of your presence and are virtues aspired to by all religions. We invoke your blessing today on our 13th president of Ripon College, Zechariah Paolo Massetti. May you bestow on him your gifts of wisdom and compassion. Inspire him to be the leader this academic community needs. At this critical moment in its history, may he move us to a higher level of intellectual excellence and moral integrity. Let him be insightful, creative, and courageous in challenging and leading us to a new future of teaching, learning, scholarship, and service to the global community. In the words of Lutheran theologian Reinhold Niebuhr, grant him the grace to accept with serenity the things he cannot change the courage to change the things which should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. Guide him in this discerning wisdom and give him a loving heart. Let him love truth and justice. Let him be compassionate to all he will lead and serve ever mindful that your image dwells in himself and in every person he encounters. In this president's own spiritual tradition, Judaism, the prophets of old spoke truth to power. They loved their God and people. They knew the life and moral integrity of their community depended on hearing the truth. We ask you to bless and guide President Massetti always to have the courage to tell us the truth about this college as he sees it. May we whom he has been called to lead likewise have the courage and the generosity to share with him our wisdom and experience. We pray today that we all can embrace the future with wisdom, confidence, realistic hope, and enthusiasm. May our mutual love for this academic community, his love and ours, empower us together to create a bright and better future for Ripon College. In the words of Micah, the Jewish prophet, may we all as a community do what the Lord requires of us, to do justice, to love kindness, 
and to walk humbly with our God. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. I am Bob Kirkland, a member of the class of 1981 and chair of the Ripon College Board of Trustees. On behalf of the entire Ripon College community, Board of Trustees, faculty, students, administrators, and staff, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the inauguration of Zach P. Massetti as Ripon's 13th president, which carries the theme, One College, One Family, More Together. Ripon is truly a close-knit community, and we thank you for joining us for this important event. Today is about family, the family of students, faculty, staff, and trustees, the family of Dr. Zach Massetti, his wife, Julia, their sons, Jules and Sam, Dr. Massetti's parents, Peter and Susan, and other guests who have come together to celebrate. When you visit the college's website, two words stand out, more together. Simple words that carry the weight of this institution's charge, more together. Throughout campus, employees and students, alumni and parents, trustees and volunteers, believe that when we work together, we can achieve more, accomplish more. This too, I believe, is what Dr. Massetti believes. During the last nine months, he and I have had numerous conversations about Ripon. No matter what we are talking about, Dr. Massetti has shown an understanding that his presidency at Ripon is about working together to strengthen this institution, to position it for greater impact. Why else would he have spent a good portion of his first three months traveling throughout the country talking with alumni? Why else would he be spending more time talking with faculty and students than working in his office? Early on in our conversations, I saw that Dr. Massetti is a person of integrity, a person of authenticity who is often the last person to speak so that he can listen to everyone's opinions, and a man of quick wit. He is also a man who understands the importance of family, the one in which he grew up, the one he and Julia have created, and the Rippon family, where together we are more. I am proud as an alumnus and as a member of the Board of Trustees to welcome Dr. Massetti to the college family, the college community, and to the great state of Wisconsin. I am now pleased to introduce Doreen Conforti Shemro, class of 1973 and secretary of the Ripon College Board of Trustees, who will serve as our mistress of ceremonies. Doreen. Good morning. It is a pleasure to be here and to share in this momentous celebration at my alma mater, Ripon College. As we open our ceremony today, the Ripon College Choral Union, together with members of the Collegium Musicum, under the direction of instructor of music, Song Kyung Graham, will perform Be Thou My Vision by John Rutter.
Thank you, Choral Union. With us for today's inauguration are delegates from many institutions of higher education representing 14 states and the District of Columbia. Some of these institutions are represented by Ripon College alumni who also hold degrees from that college or university or are on the faculty or staff there. Several current faculty are also representing their alma maters. And there are college presidents in attendance that I would like to recognize and ask that they stand. Dr. Teresa Ahmed, president of Knox College. Jonathan Brand, JD, president of Cornell College. Dr. Joseph Ergo, president of St. Mary's College of Maryland. Dr. Thomas Kunkel, president of St. Norbert College. Dr. George Arnold, president of Silver Lake College of the Holy Family. Dr. Stephen DeSalvo, president of Marion University. Dr. John Short, Dean and Chief Executive Officer at the University of Wisconsin at Fond du Lac. Thank you. Welcome. One tradition of inaugural ceremonies in higher education is for representatives from institutions, individuals, and groups throughout the country to bring greetings to the new president. I would like to introduce Dr. Robert Young, who will bring our first greeting to Dr. Massetti, this from the faculty of Ripon College. Thank you very much. President Massetti, Mrs. Massetti, other members of the Massetti family, members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished guests, my faculty and staff colleagues, students, alumni, friends, and keeping with the family theme, Carol, Mindy, Nick, and Caroline. 
It is my privilege to represent the faculty in officially greeting and welcoming President Zach Massetti and his family to Ribbon College. We extend our best wishes for a long, satisfying, and very successful tenure as our president. President Massetti, there are many challenges facing us and many opportunities available as you begin your important work here. To contribute to your success and that of the college in meeting these challenges and taking, advantages, taking advantage of these opportunities, we welcome you with the expectation of great success and with the pledge that we will devote our energy, skill, wisdom, and good cheer to make Ripon College, under your leadership, flourish long into the future. In offering to contribute these and certainly other attributes to the success, success of the college, we respectfully challenge you to take full advantage of them as important resources in the pursuit of excellence that we expect and to which we aspire. Ripon is a very special human and humane place where the faculty and staff work hard and long to present exceptional educational opportunities to our students. Our students appreciate this and reciprocate by immersing themselves in the full, rich life that these opportunities offer. The successes of our students provide us with our most important benchmarks. Our students are the focus of what we do. They are clearly what we are all about. We recognize our place in the history of the college and we acknowledge with gratitude those who preceded us and laid the foundation for the successes that we have achieved. We are dedicated to building on their contributions and to working hard to advance the college so that those who follow us will be as grateful to us as we are to our predecessors. President Massetti, this is a college to love. This is a college to respect. We hope that you will come to love and respect Ripon College as we do. We hope that you will find your tenure here to be professionally and personally very fulfilling. We hope that your family will find this to be a wonderful place to be. And we wish you Godspeed in your role as president of Ripon College. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Young. The next bearer of greetings is Emily Kiesling, class of 2014 and president of the Ripon College Student Senate. Today marks a new beginning for Ripon College, a change with both extreme challenges and immense rewards. It is with great pride that I speak on behalf of my fellow classmates. President Massetti's inauguration signifies a change in leadership, ideas, and vision here at Ripon College. His personal dedication to enhancing global awareness and his commitment to scholarship and students speak volumes about his ability to preserve and to advance Ripon as a top liberal arts college. A couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to interview President Massetti for one of my classes. When we were talking about careers, one thing he said really stuck out to me, and that was to do what you love. It has certainly become evident to the students of Ripon College that that is a motto he lives by. You can find him in the residence halls, talking and meeting with students, engaging students in Scrabble tournaments, reading with students through his book club, and opening up his home for students to come and to get to know him on a more personal level. President Massetti has followed his dreams, and they have led him here to Ripon College. He even had a personal chat with over 14,000 students, faculty, and alumni the other day. I'm sure he wouldn't have done that if he really didn't like us here. <laughs> <laughs> Through his passion, he has effectively sparked an interest in students to become more involved at the college. His vision, creativity, and drive have allowed him to not only hold his own at last Monday night's Packer party, but to unite us in our goal of becoming more together. 
And just as we speak to you, President Massetti, we, the students of Ripon College, understand that we must also lead you. We must provide you with an environment that promotes growth, that is comprised of responsible Ripon students, and allows you to develop beyond what you may have previously imagined. We are a family, and we will help each other in both the best of times and ones that test our values to the core. We will hold steadfast in our commitment to this institution and to each other. And we have every confidence that you will help us all to transform and redefine the Ripping community and our world. So President Massetti, on behalf of the students of Ripon College, we welcome you. We embrace you and encourage you to use us as your resources as you facilitate change and growth here at Ripon. And as we, students, faculty, alumni, family, and friends, embark together on this journey into a monumental year, my goal is that we execute our visions, follow our dreams, and remember that we truly are more together. Thank you, Ms. Kiesling. Gre greetings from the Ripon College staff will be presented by Cindy Vertel, Director of Counseling Services. Good morning. Today I have the privilege of offering the greeting from the Ripon College staff at this inaugural celebration. While contemplating what to say and how to best express the feelings of all staff members, I realized that in spite of some outward differences that exist among us, gender, age, job titles, responsibilities, we are really of one spirit when it comes to the respect and the love that we have for this institution. As staff members performing our different roles and carrying out a variety of tasks, our main goal is to support the mission of the college. We strive to do our best to help prepare our students for lives of productive, socially responsible citizenship. We work to complement what occurs in the academic realm and to improve the quality of student lives outside of the classroom. The staff is comprised of many dedicated and hardworking individuals who take pride in what Ripon is and who have great hopes for what Ripon is still to become. We are excited and pleased to welcome President Massetti and his family to Ripon and into our lives. The arrival of President Massetti has created excitement and anticipation for what the future holds. We look forward to contributing to the vision that he has for Ripon and to working collaboratively with him as he makes his imprint on the college. We are delighted that he's embraced Ripon and we in turn warmly embrace him and his family. There's a quote from John Quincy Adams that says, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. President Massetti, the staff of Ripon College believes in you and has already seen through your interest and actions that you are a leader. We pledge to dream more, learn more, do more and become more during your tenure as the 13th president of Ripon College. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vertel. Nicholas Spaeth, class of 2004 and president of the Ripon College Alumni Board of Directors will now bring greetings from the more than 10,000 members of the alumni body. Good morning, everyone. I'm here today with the high honor of welcoming Dr. Massetti to Ripon College on behalf of the Alumni Association. 
As the president of the Alumni Association's Board of Directors, I'm charged with representing an extremely diverse, extremely global, and extremely engaged group of people that once called Ripon College their home. She will always be our alma mater, and it, was, and it is with great enthusiasm that I, and we, the alumni, formally welcome you to her. When I say we, know that I don't use that word flippantly. That we is comp comprised of over 10,000 living alumni. That we represents every state of the union, including Washington, D.C., Guam, the Marshall Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. That we currently hails from 50 different countries around the world, a point maybe that even a man as global as yourself may find impressive. <laughs> In closing, in closing, I would like to reiterate something that we discussed when we first met each other at the dinner with our families the night before the announcement of your being the college's new president. As the president of Ripon College, you now have at your disposal a passionate and dedicated body of alumni. We love our alma mater and care passionately about her continued success and vitality. We are excited to help you, as her president, move her forward and are intrigued by the direction you will lead her. Welcome to the college, doctor. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Greetings from the Ripon community will be offered by Gary Will, mayor of the city of Ripon. Good morning, thank you for being here today. What an exciting day this is for not only me to be here, it's an honor and a privilege, but for the Ripon College and the community here as we uh, represent Dr. Massetti here in the president of the college. I'd like to thank the, the, pre the college first and foremost because we wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for the um, unity that they offered the city, our business community, um, to be involved in this whole process within the last year. The college had a very tough uh, decision to uh, hire a new president. And when they went through their process and they got down to the couple finalists that they had, we were all invited back in and had uh, part in that process in looking for a new president. And it was amazing that the talent they had. And uh, I know there's a football game today, so my first choice uh, when we went through this whole program was Dr. Massetti. And I believe the college hit not only a touchdown today with Dr. Massetti, but a two-point conversion. <laughs> He's been a pleasure to talk to. Anybody that hasn't talked to him yet, uh, get to know him. He is so super nice and approachable. And I do believe that the college, like I said, hit a home run, but the, the um, chemistry between Dr. Massetti and Dr. Seaman, I believe, me, Gary, will, that that will take this college higher and farther than they've ever seen before. And that's just the chemistry that I've seen from the outside looking in from a city leader that these two have together. And I think that will, again, just carry this college and our community together farther than we've ever seen before. Um, I set up on the hill that, you know, some people like to hit the ground running. I believe he was running and hasn't hit the ground yet. Um, <laughs> and he's still running. So we actually got his wife, Julie, involved in, in uh, city government before she was even here yet. So uh, on behalf of the, this Ripon City community, I would like to thank Zach and his family, and I hope the next time we're here is when he retires. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Will. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Christopher Wilna, President of the Associated Colleges of the Midwest, representing the 14 private colleges making up our consortium. Greetings and congratulations, President Massetti. Your colleagues from liberal arts colleges across the country join with me in welcoming you to the presidency of Ripon College. As president of the ACM, I'm especially pleased to welcome you. More than 50 years ago, Ripon College was a founding member of the Associated Colleges of the Midwest. This association of 14 selective liberal arts colleges shares a commitment to excellence in teaching and learning. And in support of these aims, 
a jointly owned portfolio of programs for the college's students, faculty, and staff. Today, liberal arts colleges face challenges in many realms, demographic, financial, technological, to name only a few. As the leader of Ripon College, you will need to find opportunities within these challenges and to demonstrate the enduring value of residential liberal education in preparing students for life, for meaningful work, and for making contributions to society. The future of liberal learning itself depends on your work here in the rolling hills and lakes of eastern Wisconsin. It's worth noting in this context that I was interested to see that you were born in Brazil, a country that has a concept called the jeito, which means finding a path forward where there seems to be no path at all. And it's usually not a straight line between point A and point B. Having this skill and this innate knowledge is a very useful power for a college president. <laughs> Count on us and call on us, all of us who are assembled here today, and on your colleagues at your sister's schools to help you in your endeavors as you lead Ripon. I join with everyone here today in wishing you resounding success. Thank you, Dr. Welna. Rolf Wagenke is President and Chief Executive Officer of the Wisconsin Association of Independent Colleges and Universities, which represents the 20 in independent institutions of higher education in the state. Please welcome Dr. Wagenke, who will bring greetings from Waiku. On behalf of the Wisconsin Association of Independent Colleges and Universities, I welcome you to the family. From the academies in ancient Greece, to the library at Alexandria, to the medieval universities across Europe, higher education has always been, at heart, a community of scholars, both the professorate and students. This community transcends international and institutional boundaries. Being part of this community does not mean a closed conformity, but joyous, contentious, creative service to a great cause. Blessed are you, blessed are we all, to be united in this great cause, more together. Thank you, Dr. Wagenke. The Honorable Tom Petri, who represents Wisconsin's sixth congressional district in the U.S. House of Representatives, will now bring greetings. Faculty and administrators, students, graduates, distinguished guests, and most importantly, President Zach Musetti. I'm honored to be here today on this auspicious occasion as Ripon College inaugurates you as its 13th president. I'm pleased to offer greetings from the state of Wisconsin, from the Congress of the United States, from the House Committee on Education and the Workforce. I note that President Massetti actually took office on the 1st of July, something which might seem astonishing to a government office holder as we're accustomed to having the President's inauguration take place before he takes up the duties of his office. But on reflection, I see that this happy event is more akin to the, I can think what the British do when they celebrate the Queen's birthday, which always takes place in late May or, or early June, regardless of the date of the monarch's actual birthday. <laughs> Both this and that occasion provide a much needed opportunity to praise excellent leadership and to look forward to the future with confidence and with enthusiasm. In looking over President Massetti's curriculum vitae, one finds a degree in history and Italian language, a master's in international relations, and a PhD in politics. 
One finds service as a professor and as a faculty dean. One finds President Massetti hosting an award-winning radio program, directing the Center for Study of Democracy, working for the U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, working at the United Nations, and at CNN. This is a wide-ranging, varied career showing a great deal of dynamism and hard work. One might say that Ripon College was fortunate to get him except that it is, after all, Ripon College, a most distinguished institution. Accordingly, Ripon College and President Massetti are a perfect match, each happily enhancing the prestige of the other. There's an old Chinese curse, with which I'm sure you're familiar, which goes, may you live in interesting times. And that's certainly true of us today, particularly within the world of higher education. The nature of work is changing rapidly. Companies are seeking employees that can think creatively and work collaboratively with people of varying skill levels. Even in manufacturing, and maybe especially in manufacturing, the workplace is leveling out with the old model of managers overseeing an army of line workers being replaced by one that engages workers in a cycle of continual process improvement. We're also confronting challenges as citizens and as a nation that require these same skill sets. From our nation's growing budget deficits to the 21st century conflicts in Afghanistan and Libya and other regions of the world, we must be ready to think about problems in new ways, be open-minded, and engage in constructive dialogue with one another in order to find effective solutions that move us forward. Higher education has an integral role to play in both of these spheres, but higher education faces its own challenges and scrutiny in terms of continually rising costs and questions about academic quality. These challenges will continually require institutions of higher education to look critically at their mission as well as how they're accomplishing that mission, and it may require administrators to embrace new models and new technologies that fundamentally remake the instructional process in this country. So I look forward to working with President Massetti in the future due to my role on the House Education Committee. My door will always be open to him as we work diligently to improve education in the United States States and to keep Ripon College among the very best colleges in our United States. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Petri. Dr. Massetti has also received warm, reg warm, excuse me, warm regards from all of Ripon College's surviving past presidents. I am now honored to welcome to the podium someone who has known Dr. Massetti for 22 years and had an influential role in his life, the former director of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, the Honorable George Tennant. Mr. Tennant served in this capacity from 1997 to 2004, making him the second longest serving director in the agency's history. Mr. Tennant received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President George W. Bush in 2004 and is the Distinguished Professor in the Practice of Diplomacy at Georgetown University. In 2008, he became a managing director at the Merchant Bank Allen & Company in New York City. Mr. Tennant served as Dr. Massetti's first boss after he graduated from college. They both worked for the U.S. Senate Select Committee as on intelligence, as, excuse me again, on intelligence as staffers for former U.S. Senator David L. Bourne, Democrat of Oklahoma, who now serves as the president of the University of Oklahoma. Dr. Massetti and Mr. Tennant have maintained a close friendship since that date. Please welcome Director Tennant. Good morning. Um, it's an honor for me to be here at the inauguration of my old friend, Zach Paolo Massetti, as your new president. Mr. President, thank you for having me here. Um, we've known each other for over 22 years, and when we first met each other, we were but much younger men, although he's still a pretty young man. Um, and to this day, he still calls me Meat. 
Thank you, Meet. <laughs> Good to be here. This is what I can tell you about your new president. Even 25 years ago, with shoulder length hair, he had a thirst for knowledge and an inquisitive, curious nature that brought out the best in all of us. He looked at the world with a sense of awe, and while specialists would try to explain a complicated problem, he would step back and through the study of culture, language, history, and the arts, reposition our thinking to focus on the bigger, more important considerations before we wrestled with the specific problem at hand. Why do people do what they do? What is, the, is it about the uniqueness of their historical experience and culture that makes someone a friend, an enemy, or something in between? He is a passionate and engaging man, an internationalist. He loves Italians. He is a sportsman, a wordsmith, a journalist, a romantic of sorts, I guess, a humanitarian, and a plain old get it done, died in the wool ward politician. He is an intellectual and a practitioner. And what he will convey to all of you is a deep appreciation of your history and yet challenge each and every one of you, faculty, students, administrators, to up your game, to think bigger, to engage the world and be the crown jewel of a small liberal arts colleges across this country that are so absolutely essential to our success. He will lead by example and from the front listen carefully, and make you all feel like this is a true community. Involve all in the discussion on the road to take, and then execute relentlessly on what has been decided. I have met few people in my life who exhibit his level of care for others, and even fewer who carefully listen listen to all points of view, and even in disagreement, will still conduct himself with even greater grace and dignity. So now you're out there thinking, how is it possible that anybody is this good? <laughs> and I will tell you that it is possible. And all you have to do is spend some time with his mom, his dad, his sister with Julia, and watch how they're raising Jules and Sam to know it's true. His mom and dad were Peace Corps volunteers, committed to community and public service, dedicated to the written word and teaching their children about the importance of learning, reading, and the exploration of the unknown. His sister, Abby, an Amherst and Columbia graduate, runs a successful art gallery in New York City. And finally, there's Julia, with a graduate degree in international affairs and a law degree. She started out in finance, hated being an investment banker, imagine that, and opted instead to pursue Holocaust claims for the state of New York chasing after Swiss bankers. I could go on and on about them and Zach's dad's service as a distinguished federal judge, but the point should be pretty clear. Jack, Zach comes from a family that showed him great love, a family where discussion and study and engagement and openness to men and women of all walks of life and the pursuit of a greater good for all of us is what mattered. So his leadership of this institution today is very relevant because we're at an, at an important moment when people are questioning the importance of a liberal arts education. What's the sense, they say, what is the sense of training young men and women if they can't find a job? Well, to all those specialists who chant, we got jobs, Zach and I would say yes, but the men and women of Ripon Ritten College have futures. The Princeton historian Stanley Katz has written that a liberal arts education is the only intellectual antidote to the overwhelming flood of information and genuine technological change that we're experiencing. A liberal arts education that works teaches students to read and read reason to learn something about the range of human expression and experience, to recognize and construct arguments, 
and to have a sense of humility about the lives and minds of those that have gone before. So let me get let me get practical with you for a minute, because for almost 24 years, I was a practitioner. National security professionals invoke three words, complexity, diversity, and change. They've almost become cliches. But there's a fourth word, fast. Because the world literally comes at you fast, and the better prepared we are to make sense of what is coming at us in light speed, the better off we will be. At the very least, a liberal arts education can help us recognize that at every level of analysis, the world is complex, continuous, and interdependent. Still, we as human beings love to simplify a good story. We love a cracking yarn, a strong narrative with a clear beginning, middle, and end. But the real stories I used to deal with seldom began with once upon a time or concluded in a tidy way, everything tied up in a neat bow. This kind of education, what you're doing here, isn't a magic potion that once you swallow everything will be clear, but it should help us understand that underneath those clear narratives, nothing is quite that cut and dried. Few conclusions are as pat as we'd prefer to believe, that even the commonplace is often more profound than we might seem on the surface. I I want to talk to you, I want to give you a sense of, I'm going to even operationalize this one more step. I want to talk to you about a man I used to work with who I believe embodies what a liberal arts education is all about. His name was Paul Frandano. I would describe him as a longshoreman with almost a PhD. Perhaps one of the most creative analysts I ever worked with. I went to his retirement ceremony three or four years ago, and it was the usual thing, a bunch of important people making speeches. They hung a gong around his neck. Everybody applauded. Then it was his turn to speak. And what he said was how much he had loved being an intelligence officer at CIA for 30 years. But along the way, before the ceremony, he would often say to us, listen, intelligence is what I do, but it's really not who I am. That day when he was mustering out and moving on to something new, he had to admit he was wrong. It turned out that Paul said, and I, these are his words in total, that being an intelligence officer was exactly who he was because intelligence work let him pour everything he knew and thought and cared about into his work. Politics, history, philosophy, literature, economics, science, technology, language, geography, and you'd have to know Paul, it just kept going, communications, film, music, sports, family, and then he said, growing up in New Jersey, breathing air that smelled different every day, and dealing with tough guys getting punched out every now and then, the whole shebang into his work, he said. And trust me, it was all there. That, to me, that's being intellectually diverse, bringing all of your experience to the table. He loved to take the opposite side of an argument, but he was always willing to concede a point. He didn't like to talk about the truth because he knew we were always going to tell the president what we believed. He knew he wasn't the smartest guy in the room, but he knew how to ask the right questions, how to break down an argument, how to build a different argument from the same materials of the argument he had just blown to bits, how to make the people around him better. Paul Frandano analyzed China, the Middle East, the impact of environmental degradation on national security, and was my chief contrarian. He loves Bruce Springsteen, Radiohead, Duke Ellington, the opera, Shakespeare, soccer, has 2,000 CDs and vinyl LPs, 10,000 books, he says, mostly unread, that represent, in his words, the measure of his pretension. <laughs> And I can tell you, and I can tell you when he spoke in a room, whether it was the Oval Office or younger, or a conference room with younger analysts, everybody listened with rapt attention because of the power of his thought. This is the kind of man or woman we want to train for the future. I talked to you about speed. 
Louis Pasteur once said, in the field of observation, chance only favors the prepared mind. Preparation and anticipation is everything, and a liberal arts education is nothing if it's not about preparing the mind for making sense of the world. It's this ability to make sense to understand something, to put it in its context, to be able to give a coherent account of it so that others might understand it and act on that account and to avoid the actually, the absolute opposite, to make no sense whatsoever. So today, if you look at what we're trying to understand, take a look at the Middle East. How should we think about the shifting of the tectonic plates in the Middle East? How will a yearning of people for freedom and opportunity translate into the development of civil society? What is political Islam? Is it monolithic? Should we fear it or embrace it? What will the fate be of Al-Azhar University of Cairo and other institutions of higher learning so upon which so much depends? What will we learn from social media or other sources of local opinion? How can we make sense and paint a picture in the absence of an interdisciplinary liberal arts education to make sense of all this? It's very hard. Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. And then he said, imagination encircles the world. In Zach Massetti, you have a young president with so much talent. He will stir your imagination and bring the world to you in ways you never thought possible. And we are all rooting for him and for you and this great community of learning. Thank you very much for having me tonight. Thank you, Director Tennant. Please stand and join the Choral Union and the Collegium Musicum for the singing of Woody Guthrie's This Land is Your Land. Lyrics can be found on page 13 of your program.
For more than 160 years, Ripon College has been well served by its presidents. I'm sorry, everyone be seated, please. <laughs> <Realize>. <laughs> by its presidents, beginning with William E. Merriman in 1863 and continuing through David C. Joyce. These individuals, no matter how long or short their tenure, brought to the role a conviction in the power of education and an understanding of the importance of liberal arts to our society. Each president faced unique challenges while working to strengthen the college. We remain deeply grateful for their leadership and vision that has brought us to this moment. Today we formally welcome into this group of distinguished leaders a person of similar qualities and commitment to higher education, Dr. Zach P. Massetti. Dr. Massetti spent the past five years as the Dean of the College of International Studies at the University of Oklahoma, where he also held the William J. Crow Chair in Geopolitics. A teacher first, Dr. Massetti was in the classroom every semester at Oklahoma, leading courses on American foreign policy, introduction to international studies, and senior seminars on foreign policy, media, and film. The author of numerous articles, he is the co-editor of a forthcoming book, Understanding the Global Community, and was head, excuse me, host of the World Views, an award-winning program on national public radio. From 2007, 2002 to 2007, he was the director of the Center for the Study of Democracy and a member of the political science faculty at St. Mary's College of Maryland, the state's honors liberal arts college. Born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, while his parents were working in the Peace Corps, Dr. Massetti grew up in Chevy Chase, Maryland. He received a bachelor's degree in American history and Italian language from Bowdoin College, a master's degree in international relations from Johns Hopkins University, and a doctorate in politics from New York University. Prior to entering academia, he worked for the U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, the United Nations, and the Cable News Network. He and his wife, Julia, have two sons, Sam, 10, and Jules, 8. We now come to the official installation of Dr. Zach P. Massetti as Ripon College's new president. Board Chair Bob Kirkland and Dr. Gerald Seaman will conduct the investiture. Dr. Massetti, please step forward with Chair Kirkland and Dean Seaman. Now is the time for weighty things. <laughs> Dr. Massetti, Zach, the Ripon College Board of Trustees has appointed you 13th president of Ripon College, an honor and privilege bearing a challenging responsibility. Standing before the guests and delegates to this inauguration, the Ripon College community you are called upon to provide the leadership for this college in its efforts to carry out the education of young men and young women in a manner which looks both to the proud tradition of the liberal arts and to the challenges of the new millennium. Before you, before us, is the presidential chain of office, a symbol of the high office you hold. Into the chain is cast a medallion which carries the college seal. This seal signifies the great value we place on all aspects of the college's own special heritage. Let that heritage, let every part of it, be your guide in our journey toward the future. The presentation of this chain to you at your inauguration continues a tradition at Ripon College. May the symbolism, may the power in this change serve as a guide throughout your tenure.
By virtue of the authority of the Ripon College Board of Trustees, I, Robert J. Kirkland, entrust you with the presidential chain of office, thereby officially inaugurating you, Dr. Zach P. Massetti, as the 13th president of Ripon College. On behalf of the trustees and members of the Ripon College community and family, let me be the first to congratulate you. I affirm our confidence in you and pledge our support in the years ahead. It is a pleasure to present to you students, faculty, trustees, alumni, delegates, and friends of Ripon College, Dr. Zach P. Massetti, the 13th president of Ripon College. Good morning. <clears throat> it is an honor to be inaugurated today as the 13th president, and, I, and I'd just like to begin by saying to Mayor Will, I have never been compared to a two-point conversion before, <laughs> and I will never forget that. So thank you, Mayor. I've been thinking about this speech for months, and I want to begin uh, with last Saturday when I went over to the athletic fields to watch the women's soccer team play. It was the first really crisp day of fall. It was that classic collegiate setting. The leaves were starting to change. There were high, puffy white clouds in the sky. A wind came in across the trees. I took an hour-long walk along the prairie. And on the trail, I stopped and talked with Ripon College economics professor Soren Hoge. I kept on walking. I was collecting my thoughts about the community I would officially join today and the responsibilities of leading a 161-year-old institution. College communities are often compared to families, and family has been the theme of this week's inaugural activities that culminates today. Of course, we all belong to multiples of these kinds of families, or circles, if you will, during our lives. And they help define us, and they shape us. Good families cheer us on during our successes. They give us advice in times of decision. And they bolster us in times of distress. Today, I'm very fortunate to have people from my family joining me on this special day. My wife, Julia, and children, Sam and Jules, whom I love so much. I'm proud that my mom and dad, Susan and Peter Massetti, are here today from Chevy Chase, Maryland. And my sister, Abby, brother-in-law, Derek, and my newest niece, Tess, from Brooklyn, New York, are also here. I also welcome my Aunt Judy, from, Judy Massetti, from Rockville, Maryland, and another aunt, Sunny Reed, by the way, a Lawrence grad, my uncle Dan Epstein, and my, my cousin Joel Epstein and his family who are here from Chicago. I'm also pleased that my brother and sister-in-law, Kendall and Roe Homan, as well as my nephew George, could be here today from Birmingham, Alabama. I also want to give a particular thanks to George Tennant for his remarks. I am proud to have worked with him and to be his friend. He and his wife, Stephanie, who's also here, are very special people to me. <clears throat> I'm honored to have old friends, former students, and colleagues who are here from around the country. They constitute another family to me. And I want to especially recognize those in attendance from the University of Oklahoma and from St. Mary's College of Maryland, where I was a dean and a professor, respectively, before coming to Ripon. These schools are an important part of who I am, and they will always hold a special place for me. My remarks today, however, are especially directed towards two specific groups in the audience. The first is the amazing array of representatives from colleges and universities from around the country. And I especially want to thank the college presidents who are here today, Tom Kunkel from St. Norbert's College, Stephen DeSalvo from Marion University, Jonathan Brand from Cornell College, Joseph Ergo from St. Mary's College of Maryland, Teresa Arnott from Knox College, John Short from the University of Wisconsin Fond du Lac, and George Arnold from Silver Lake College of the Holy Family. Your presence here today honors Ripon College and it honors me. 
The second are my new colleagues, the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Ripon College. I am humbled to become part of the narrative of this wonderful institution. I am honored to work both for you and with you. More than half a century ago, John F. Kennedy, then a junior senator from Massachusetts, stood before my father's high school graduating class and warned that narrow views of education threaten the future of the country. What makes America great, Kennedy said, are citizens who can, quote, ride easily over broad fields of knowledge. Men like Thomas Jefferson, whom a contemporary described as a gentleman of 32 who could calculate an eclipse, survey an estate, tie an artery, plan an edifice, try a cause, break a horse, dance a minuet, and play the violin. President Kennedy's, President Kennedy's call for those who can ride easily over broad fields of knowledge is what we celebrate and nurture at liberal arts colleges like Ripon all over the nation. College is the place where that hypothetical 18-year-old from the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. can learn to become a better citizen, where he can study American history and Italian language, get to know his professors outside the classroom, be a disc jockey, and play on the basketball team, even if he is sitting at the end of the bench. <laughs> I am proud to have received a liberal arts college degree, and I will always defend its worth and its value. As president of Ripon, I will stand against politicians who say that a college degree is for snobs, and I reject the demand of some loud voices that say that state legislatures should monitor the speech, teaching, and research of faculty. The vibrancy. The vibrancy of our society depends on the continued health of our educational system. And if we are to imagine the kind of country we want our children and our grandchildren to inherit, then it is incumbent upon all of us to protect colleges and universities. We should, however, separate the catcalls that come from some of our politicians from the very real need to reconsider the way higher education does business. You have seen the stories. Today's students wonder if there will be jobs when they graduate. And while this is certainly not the first group of students worrying about the job market upon graduation, there are two other factors that are relatively new that make the problem more acute. First, rising tuition has put a college education out of reach for too many families. Second, even though very few students pay the full sticker price of college, the student loan debt has gone up by a multiple of five since 1999. Newsweek this month had a cover story that said, the headline, is college a lousy investment? And concluded that the time and money spent pursuing a college diploma just isn't worth it. But Newsweek is wrong. College is worth it. It is a great investment. In the past three months, I've met with dozens of Ripon College alumni. I've heard inspiring stories that speak to the importance of a liberal arts college education. You could ask my, president, my fellow presidential colleagues here today and they would tell you similar stories. They would tell you stories of people like Bill Jordan from Chicago, who graduated from Ripon in the class of 1969. He majored in math when he was here but he also had an interest in history. Today, he's the Dayton Stockton Professor of History and Chairman of the History Department at Princeton University, where he specializes in medieval and English constitutional history. Or Gail Gitcho, class of 2001. She was a communications major from San Antonio, Texas. Today, she's the communications director of the Romney Ryan for President campaign. Or Sam Sondale, he graduated from Ripon in the class of 2011. He's from Princeton, Wisconsin, a small town not far from Mir. He was a biochem double major who discovered a special interest in the biology of animals. Sam also studied abroad, twice, in Spain. He's now studying for a joint PhD MD degree at Yale University. So while these are trying times for many colleges, we must stand firmly committed to the kinds of core values that Ripon celebrates in its mission statement of creating an intimate learning community in which students experience a richly personalized education. We should, however, also think with creativity about how to address the cost value proposition that is making college slip away for too many families. Unfortunately, the traditional remedies are limited and educational, and educational excellence costs money. 
But recognizing that the business of higher education has changed is a good start. One intriguing way to begin is to provide more innovative pathways to graduation. Most colleges underutilize their campuses during the summer months. These are arguably the nicest times of the year. Particularly here in Wisconsin, or so I'm told, I've only lived here since July, and they tell me there are times when it actually gets cold and snows. <laughs> We ought to carefully consider how to better make use of this four-month hiatus from the classroom that once served a much greater purpose in an agricultural America long gone. Internships for academic credit and practical work experience should be encouraged year-round for those who want it, and we should explore this summer semester that puts students on a pathway towards spending perhaps a fourth year in graduate school or out in the workforce earning income. Just as making better use of the summer seems logical, we also need to encourage the growth of multidisciplinary study. The biology student who, for example, minors in Spanish and economics, is going to be more intellectually flexible and employable in an economy that is going to require multiple skill sets. Finally, we must embrace technology as a complement and not a threat to the liberal arts. While online courses will never be a substitute for great professors, the reality is that tomorrow's scholars will have access to data, archives, software, etc. at an incredible speed. Five years ago, the concept of Skype or electronic textbooks and online libraries were novelties, no longer. Today our students expect it, tomorrow students will demand greater use of interactive technology as part of the liberal arts college experience. At Ripon, we have much work to do. We know this. We have real needs. We want to build up our endowment. We want to renovate our buildings. We want to continue to attract excellent students. And we want to make sure that our outstanding faculty and staff are justly compensated for everything that they do for this college day in and day out. Now, Vince Lombardi, who some of you in the audience may know once coached a professional football team up the road here, he said, quote, people who work together will win, whether it be against complex football defenses or the problems of modern society. And in order to overcome the challenges facing American higher education and Ripon, we must work together. This is all of us, students, faculty, staff, administrators, alumni, boards of trustees, between colleges, we must foster our collaborative strengths and find new ways to give our students the best. I aspired to become a professor and then a college president because the experience that college gives has the power to unlock a lifetime of learning. It enriches our country and it makes us all more creative and pioneering. It sets us as Americans apart from the rest of the world. We need to celebrate our successes, but we also need to be constantly thinking about ways to make both college and our, and our society better. Thank you. I, I am so proud to be here today. Thank you, Dr. Massetti. The Reverend Joanna D'Agostino, pastor at our neighboring church, the First Congregational Church of Ripon, will now give the benediction. Please remain standing. Our God is so intricate, so enormous, so complex and profound so beyond comprehension, yet still and always here among us. By that we know that our God is calling us constantly to seek wisdom. Recalling a reading from the wisdom of Solomon, I called on God and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred wisdom to scepters and thrones. I loved her more than health and beauty, and I chose to have her rather than light, because her radiance never ceases. 
All good things came to me along with her, and in her hands uncounted wealth. For wisdom is unfailing treasure for mortals. Brothers and sisters, faculty, students, and friends of Ripon College, we rejoice in the inauguration of President Zach City because we know that he loves wisdom and rejoices in her unfailing treasures. Now let us go forth from this place rejoicing in the unfailing treasure of wisdom, seeking to understand how we are called to serve the one who created our intricate bodies and souls, the one who restores us from sin and separation, and the one who sustains us, urging us forward into fullness. One God, deliverer of us all. Go in peace. Today's ceremony marks a major milestone in the history of this outstanding college and community. We recognize and renew the sense of tradition and mission that has guided this institution since its founding 161 years ago. May it also serve to guide us as we teach, support, and mentor today's students for their role as tomorrow's leaders. Please remain standing and join the Ripon College Choral Union and Collegium Musicum in the singing of the Alma Mater. The words appear on page 13 of your program. Thank you to the Ripon College Orchestra, Choral Union, Collegium Musicum, and Symphonic Wind Ensemble for the music you provided today. Immediately following the recessional, everyone is invited to attend a barbecue luncheon in honor of President Massetti and his family on Memorial, Memorial Green next to Pickard Commons. Please remain standing until the official parties have recessed. Thank you for your participation in the inauguration of Dr. Zach P. Massetti as Ripon College's 13th president.